life sentence for DUI after hitting and killing a 12 year old. Details in a live report. If you applied for FEMA assistance and you got denied or you haven't heard from them, we're working for you to show you what to do next. The unique healing power between a dog and a human. I'm Abby Black, working for kids on how you can help Brady Children's Hospital launch their own professional canine therapy program. It wasn't easy, but a mother decided her daughter at the age of 41 needed to find her forever at Noah Holmes. And the local university taking big steps toward zero waste on Earth Week. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. The Camp Pendleton Marine who pleaded guilty to driving drunk and killing a 12 year old on the 4th of July was sentenced in court today. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan. And I'm Steve Price. Carlo and Marcella are off. As CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes found out, Edward Minot Jr. has a history with alcohol abuse. She joins us now live in Vista with more. Kirsten. That's right, Steve. We were inside of that courtroom here in Vista when we learned that Edward Minot Jr. had been reprimanded by the military and received alcohol abuse counseling well before he got behind the wheel of that car and then hit and killed a 12 year old who was just riding home with his friends after watching the fireworks on the 4th of July. That's 12 year old Santiago Gaspar's mom, Elva, addressing the court with a victim impact statement at Edward Minot Jr. sentencing. There is a very empty uh, space in my heart along with his other brothers. And they will never be replaced. The family and their attorney did not want to speak on camera, but told the court through a translator. I will never see my child again. I pray to God that no parent goes through uh, this pain. The pain is too much to manage. Minot pled guilty in March to gross vehicular manslaughter and DUI after prosecutors say he killed 12 year old Santiago in a crash on Surf Rider Way and North Meyer Street in Oceanside. Police tried to pull Minot over for driving with his headlights off before this crash, but he sped off. Soon after that, he slammed into the victims. 12 year old Santiago died there at the scene. Two others were taken to the hospital. The family is devastated. Uh, they'll never be the same, but Hopefully, uh, this hearing here can bring them a little bit of closure. Deputy DA David UR says deadly cases like this are preventable. There are so many things in place in today's society that would allow you to, to go out and still have a good time, but get home safely and not injure anyone in the process. Edward Minot Jr. will get credit for time served, and he has to pay restitution to the family while he works in prison. His sentence is 13 years and eight months behind bars. Reporting for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Now, Kirsten, have we learned anything else about Minot's past alcohol abuse today? Yeah, not really. In court, we learned that he had been reprimanded by the military while he was on duty and he received alcohol counseling. What we don't know is when that happened or how long before the crash it all happened. Jesse. All right, Kirsten Holmes live for us tonight. Kirsten, thank you. New tonight, we've learned the names of the victim and suspect in yesterday's deadly shooting in Spring Valley. The San Diego County Sheriff's Office says 35 year old Ashley Bird was shot to death inside a home on La Presa Avenue yesterday morning. Deputies were initially called there for a break in. Then later last night, Orange County Sheriff's deputies found the suspect, 39 year old Christopher Bird, dead inside a car in San Clemente. The cause of his death has not yet been confirmed. Tonight, FEMA says it has received 7,000 applications for assistance because of our January floods in San Diego. Of those 7,000, FEMA approved just 2,800. Many have been denied. We are working for you to show you how to appeal FEMA's decision. CBS 8's Anna Laura has more tonight from the Mountain View Community Center, one of two disaster recovery centers. Right now, there are people inside speaking with FEMA representatives. These centers are open tonight, Thursday and Friday night up until 7 p.m. And then it closes Friday night at 7. Now, I spoke with several people today who have been denied FEMA assistance. They are extremely frustrated trying to navigate this whole appeal process. Nightmare. This thing is a nightmare. I met FEMA's Patricia Arribas outside the Mountain View Community Center. She says she's come here every day for nearly three weeks trying to get help to fix the home she owns that was flooded back in January. There's no kitchen, there's no bathrooms. 
there's no walls, it's not livable. She filed for FEMA assistance in February, but got denied. She tracks her status on the FEMA app. Not You're not approved. approved. You have been referred to SBA, and this is where I am at now. And so for weeks, she's brought documents here to try to prove she needs help. I have an appointment. First from FEMA, and now for a loan through the Small Business Administration, which is what FEMA tells some ineligible applicants to do. I've given them this paperwork over and over and over again. The applicants are human. The, if, it, if the person who's taking the application is human, mistakes happen. So work through those mistakes. FEMA's Gerard Hammock says the biggest problem, nearly half of applicants have not connected with a FEMA inspector. If you applied more than 10 days ago and have not spoken with an inspector, contact FEMA through the app, the phone, or in person. We need that uh, verification by an inspector of the damage before any money is approved. You have 60 days to appeal once denied. You may just be missing one document or a bit of info. You got to read the letter carefully, but it will often say you are ineligible for these reasons. Patricia carried her paperwork in to SBA reps again today. She says they told her she'd have a decision in two to three weeks. I just thought it was going to be an easy process, and it's been nothing but a nightmare. Working for you in Mountain View, this is Anna Laurel for CBS 8. What a frustrating process. Anna, thank you. Here at CBS 8, we want to help solve problems that affect you. If there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. County officials have identified nearly a dozen norovirus cases connected to frozen oysters imported from South Korea. This impacted customers who ate at 100's Seafood Grill Buffet, which is in Mission Valley. They ate there on March 31st and April 1st. It comes four months after a different norovirus outbreak connected to oysters that were imported from Mexico. The FDA is advising restaurants that sell oysters to check their tags or label information. And for a list of tags connected to this new outbreak, you can go to our website, cbs8.com, and click on this story. The number of people experiencing homelessness in San Diego County has gone up for the 24th month in a row. Data from the Regional Task Force on Homelessness shows most people impacted are over 55 years old. The nonprofit Father Joe's Villages says there's more work to be done, including adding more detox beds to reach more people needing that help. More than 600 people in this recent year have died on the streets, half of whom have died, died from drug overdoses. So we, we can only help them if they're alive. We have to keep them alive to be able to truly help them. Meanwhile, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria announced he may be cutting some housing commission funding. Vargas tells us this is concerning since many beds at Father Joe's Villages are supported through the housing commission. Still ahead tonight, the federal program aiming to protect kids online. Plus, we're celebrating Earth Week and we'll take you to the local campus committed to reducing food waste. A sign that things are going to change up in the forecast, the high clouds that you saw today. We're going to see a lot more cloud cover by tomorrow and I'll tell you why coming up. And the proven health benefits that come from human and dog interactions are working for kids series continues coming up next.